inheritance the benefit of it is that two generations don't have to work for the same thing the benefit of inheritance is that the ceiling of a generation becomes the floor for the next generation that's why the bible says that a good man that's what the bible calls him a good man live at inheritances for his children children that's why i get pissed off when you sit under sound informations like this and you are not writing what will your children see as a journalist you don't you can't leave books for them to read i say while i was in school this is a compendium of all the salmon notes while in campus one your child is motivated to know that you serve god where you are there because you will explain tire no evidence you must have evidence the, 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 the articulation of a lawyer in a profession does not win a case for his ability to present tangible evidences that's why we keep these things for record purposes some of our parents they didn't they were not opportune to do like this like the whites and that's why some of them used to lie every of our parents were very serious why they were in school but how are we going to find out have any of you your parents told you i was not serious while i was in school all of them were carrying first is that also that's the generation we met but there is no evidence <laughs> so leave evidences for your generation that's the way the whites behave that's what makes them productive they have too many things they have a vision and idea strike they have what do they do they write it down they write it down they jot it down they work how many average nigeria have a diary because you don't even have a plan schedule so what what's the need for diary if the if it, at all you see one step, you turn it to someone note you don't have a to-do list you don't have a profitability for that do we understand but when you are thinking for success, you know you might look at yourself now and say, I don't need it, sir. It's people like you that need all these things because of your schedule. I, I started doing, living that life. I started to do this almost like a go. Because I, I know where I was going. I wasn't preparing myself for where I was. The Bible says, and he gave them gift according to their several abilities. So I need to boost my ability to get more opportunities from God. Do you understand that? So you might not need that because actually, is there somebody running a kiosk? accountant and so the size of your destiny tell me what, the kind of accountability you put to your life but when you run a conglomerate like Dangote global company, will you run it but just say and carry the money go do like this you put records you 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 hire professional accountants to keep your records in place and keep the company in check so the side the way you put accountability around your life can tell us the way your destiny is sized and perceived by you don't wait till you get there to do the right thing do the right and you will get there. Don't wait till you get there to do the right thing. Do the right thing, then you will what? Get there. So I said, if you have gone through on certain unpleasant experiences, automatically you are mandated to make life better for those around you. You have to be self-aware and conscious of where you are and where you are going. That is what we call the success gap. The success gap is the gap between where you are and where you want to be in life. You must be conscious of that every day of your life you wake up. Success is what you attract by who you are becoming. Success is what you attract by who you are what becoming. The problem is not that there are no opportunities. The problem is that you don't match it. The problem is not that there are no jobs in Nigeria. The problem is that you don't match the opportunities here and there there are those who the companies are willing to pay extra mile just to keep them in this same country i'm a very exposed person i've seen greatness i've seen influential people i have great exposure in life whether by the writings of book or by the people i've met and the places that god has given the privilege to access everyone you see that have attained that level of greatness or success it became something and it pulled the success naturally to their direction. One time I remember we went for a job interview and a lady, young, a young lady, I think she was 26 by then, her CV was 8 pages. And all I had was a bachelor degree in chemical engineering first class. I was so ashamed I just packed myself and left. 8 pages. And I asked myself, when these people were studying in life, where was I? May life not cheat you. 
the Bible says that he has given us everything that pertains to life and godliness. So there are two portions a man must concentrate in. Not just godliness, but also life. Because without the presence of the life part, the godliness can be affected. That's why the Bible tells us in Psalm 125 that the lot of the wicked should not, the rod of the wicked should not rest upon the righteous, lest the righteous is tempted to put their hands. The righteous can be tempted when the pressures of life is so much on them. When the young man knows if I don't get this food, oh my family will die the next morning. He can decide to falsify this figure for survival. That's why the Bible says that what will a man not give for the exchange of his soul? Will you not get there where the price you have to pay will be corruption because of the desperation on you? What will a man not give for survival? Are you not seeing the one trending? Every boyfriend is killing their girlfriend now. Survival! The pressures of life are so much. And men are desperate desperate. Make up your mind today that you'll end well in life. Decision decides destiny, not condition. Your condition is not what will conclude your life. It is the decisions you are making today. You can decide to give an excuse for all you have been through in life. If people that you think are successful or better than you, even in this land, if they tell their own story, you will even leave your problem. I know you really don't have a problem. Do we understand that? Many of the people we run to help me with 2,000, help me with 5,000, help me. They don't have it too funny. They are just giving in their best. You are the one that just chose not to be productive with your own life. By choosing to live with excuse. Listen to me. There are two things you have to produce in life. And you will produce either one of it. Reasons or results. You must produce one of it. Either reasons or results. I have every reason to be down in life. I have every reason to be stopped. I told you I lost almost 15 million last year. No. Lost. I have every reason to sit down and cry and look for sympathy from people. But at every point in time, life beats me down. I shake myself and say, though the righteous fall seven times. The sign that is a righteous man is that he will rise up again. But the sign that is a wicked man is that if he falls there, he remains there. Like Moses, know what rod you have in your hand. Because that is what God will use to shake your world. Know what rod God has put in your hand. God might not give you the rod, but he is ready to bless it. He might not pick a business and say, take the business. But you bring that rod for him. He can put his blessing on it. Do we understand that? Challenge yourself. If you don't make a move, you will remain where you are. The first law of Newton, law of motion, says that every object remains in a state of rest or continual motion till an external force is acted on it. You need to put the force of growth, the force of improvement, the force of persistence, the force of learning, the force of sacrifice on your life so that you move forward. It is the moves you make in life that produces the waves you cause. If you want to see uncommon results, be ready to take uncommon steps. Do we understand that? What makes the ordinary different from the extraordinary is that word extra. What others were not willing to do that you chose to do. Check every man, even greatly used by God, they were willing to dare what others refused to dare. Sincerely, I can tell you that they loved God more than others did. They were willing to do certain things that others were willing to do. That's the sign of leadership. Sacrifice. We're not willing to pay that. Very quickly. What are the back ends of success? I'll just run quickly to where I start. And um, I will pick up and build up on the other major point. Listen, listen, listen. Everyone look up to me. A lot can happen for you in one month. A lot can happen for you by the decisions you make up your mind to make. You must get to a point you are tired of pain. Every time you see yourself in an unpleasant situation, what you try to do is to come out of it. That's why those situations, sometimes they are not created by the devil, but God himself shake the foundations of your life to make you make certain steps. 
He had told me almost two or four years ago. Son, it's time to leave. I sat here. I'm still paying the price dearly for it right now. Sometimes I come to service and I tell them, the eagle is about to fly. Sit power meeting to tell that I am, but I chose not to obey. Till he scattered me and did me like this. I ran with my life. Sometimes it's not the devil. It is God putting you in an unpleasant situation to make you get challenged and take certain steps. He knows if you come from a family where you are too comfortable, you will not break into destiny. No woman give birth in comfortability. I say, hello, it's time to just, just give birth. So doctor, just close your minute. You must go through that labor pain sometimes just like most of us listen when you refuse to give birth to destiny take the steps you need to take what do they do they do what they call inducing and it is painful inducing simply means they put a kind of injection into the system to make the child uncomfortable and the child begins to fight the woman that this place stay here anymore the place is now conducive is that not called inducement and you know it is worse because the woman is in pain compared to the normal labor pain she would have had. Challenge yourself. The pressure is there. That unpleasant situation is to put you under pressure to say I choose not to allow my life to end like this. Not looking. See, our problem is that we are always looking for easy way out. Back instead of you to think what are the things I have to do to be productive in my finances, the next option you have in your mind is to beg unpleasant situation are to push you to take steps to get to pleasant situations don't get comfortable with that state of life Say, sir, you know, eh, uh, I don't want to start certain business. I don't want to do certain things because the risks are too much. You know, because this is this. <laughs> he that is down need not to fear a fall. Why can somebody that is poor be fearing poverty? Pursue no game money, they fear me lose money. money yet. Is that not see What do this? No, the risks, the risks. See, define what is risk to you. What you focus. Is what affects you in the inside. The lion sees a, an elephant, he doesn't look at the size, he sees the quantity of meat. You don't see investment as such. Do you understand that? He sees what the size of the meat that can sustain for longer days, not the size of the elephant that is too big. Number one. What are the back end of sucks? We started last week and we stopped at four. Number one, we said a person and flaming desire for success. A small fire cannot generate much heat. How strong is the strength of your desire? How tiring is that pain and discomfort to you? Wake up every day, look at your family and say, I don't want to repeat this life. I don't want to repeat this life. Even when I'm down in health, the worst thing you should say to me is sorry. Until nobody said life for me to accept. I told you if you are so if you want to show concern, tell me sir, you are healed. I'm very happy. What's your sorry going to suffer me? Did you not see the the, the, the behavior of the Shunammite woman? That the Bible says that when she was trying to approach the prophet Elisha on the mountain, she was interrupted by Gehazi. And Gehazi said, what is the problem? What did she say? Nothing. Why do I give you a response to someone that will not be giving me a solution? You are jumping from one place, one house to another, sharing people your predicament, the family you come from, sharing people what you have been to. Who cares? Tell your neighbor, who cares? The highest of two things will happen to you. Number one, you'll be shown sympathy and assisted in the little way. Not what can bring you out of the pain. Number two, your story will be shared further. Who cares? What's the problem? She told Gazi, nothing. 
the solution I'm looking for is not in your hand. Why should I be disturbing myself? Do we understand that? You must have a flaming passion. A flaming passion. Passion is what pushes you into action. That's why it is called per action. It is what drives you crazy. What makes you do the things you do. The strength of your dreams that has the ability to keep you awake. A dream is not what you have when you sleep. It's what you see and stay awake. That's what we call passion. What do you want to see? That's why the Bible says where there is no vision, people what? Perish. What is in front of you? You can't feature in a future whose picture you are yet to capture. Where, where are you going to? Where do you want to attain? What do you want to become? You wake up every day with that drive in the inside of you. It dip- disciplines your energy. It disciplines your focus. A man who says, I want to have large companies that Dangote will not spend 17 hours in FUT football beach. Because that's not what people want to attain that do. So your passion disciplines your energy. Disciplines your, it doesn't matter how entertaining it is to others, but to you, you say, I'm not interested. There's something I'm pursuing. There's something in front of me. Rise up to your feet and say, Lord, give me passion. Ignite my passion, oh God. Ignite my, the Bible says that he has placed eternity in the heart of man. Eternity in the heart of man. It is inside of you. They just need to set it on fire. Some of you, there were seasons where it was there. You wake up every day and say, Lord, this pain must end. What happened now that you are now living with it? You are so comfortable with it. You will pray more serious if you are praying. Sit down. In Jesus' name we pray. Number two, access to power information. Access to power information. I said that last week. Access to power information. Access to one information can change your life completely. That's why, see, listen, two things basically predict a man's destiny with all things being equal. Outlier effects intact. Are we following? Two things. Number one, who you follow or who you surround yourself with. And number two, your source of what? Information. When your, your, your information is limited, something will happen to you. So, God came to the cool of the evening and asked the, the man, where are you? And man said, I am naked. And I thought God we have to shout at him and say, because you are eating of the tree of good and evil. Because, what? Who told you is that not the rest response his concern was who are you now listening to who told you that's why even when we con- came to COVID-19 and they say we should go and hide ourselves who told us WHO do we understand that the who we always come at different intervals to tell us and say there is a disease outside go and hide but on Wednesdays we can open for market the disease doesn't come out that day it knows that today is market day. <laughs> Are we together? Who told you? So your source of what? Information. One information can transform your life. One power information can change you completely. Arms for information. Tire- tirelessly search for truth. Don't assume you know. You will always be defeated in your area of what? No knowledge. Where you have ignorance will be your area of this. De- de- the Bible says, well, we're not against flesh and blood and flesh and sins and flesh, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness. The word darkness there is ignorance. That's where they come to rule. So if you have ignorance, your academies, they rule there. Ignorance in your marriage, they rule there. You can be a pastor and beat your wife. If you have ignorance in your finances, they rule there. You can be anointed and poor. They are called rulers of darkness. Where they see ignorance, they come. That's their fault function that's their configuration that set of demons called rulers are we together that's why you must run away from ignorance africa must give themselves to searching for truth and delve it is a limitation an average african cannot sit to read something consistently for seven hours 
Learn to hunt for information. When I need something I don't know and people know it, I go to meet them. Please, I beg you. Even if I need to pay you for this, I'll be willing to pay if they need you to pay. Because sometimes your inability to pay is what will make you not to take it serious. All of you want cheap cheap for free. Come and do it for free. Come and do it for free. You don't put your heart into it. Number three. Good character. Proverbs 25 verse 14 told us about how that Abraham needed a son, a wife for Isaac. And the prayer, the servant who was sent to go do that, achieve that mission said was that whoever will look on me that I'm coming from a far distance and reason it enough that I should water and not just for me alone, for also my sheep. That is the worthy wife. Have good, your attitude determines your altitude in life. How far you go is tied to the character you choose to manifest. Beauty can take you to the palace. Give things can take you there, but the character will keep you there and keep you far. Proverbs 31 30. He said, Beauty is deceitful, but a, wife, a woman that feared the Lord, she shall be praised. Manifest godly character. Learn how to speak to people with decorum and decency. Are we together? Manifest character. In the days we are, those who are great no longer wear it on their face. Be careful. That's why the Bible wants us to be careful how you entertain strangers because you might entertain angels without even knowing. Be careful. Now, the day you don't meet your destiny ever, that's the day your altar will come alive. Like the young man who I said, they told him that they need an interview, but let them go on WhatsApp call. And when they were done with the WhatsApp call, the interviewer sent to him a message Congratulations, you have been offered the job. He now put emoji. Hooray! You must say to who? You are fired. Someone. <laughs> he collected white and brown envelope at the same time. <laughs> and some of you are like that because now you are here, nobody trained you. That there is a decorum and a behavior you must manifest. There is a way you talk to people, there's a way you treat people, there's a way you address people. If someone is talking to you over the call, then we call it etiquette. So if you will call me and call me 200 missed call. Why? Learn etiquette. Is that okay? Learn basic etiquette. Formal etiquette, informal etiquette, business etiquette, eating etiquette. Basic things like this closes doors for many. Someone do something for you. Like great servant of God, Apostle just said, someone will say, somebody do something, you disturb the person for one week. One week save my life once I die. Ask me for me and my family to die. And the person send you 10k. Then you take three days, then you all write thanks. Thanks. Or some of them write TNK. Thanks. What is wrong with you? Who trained you like that? How do you want to get to greatness? You just want to stand there and be shouting and receive and receive. You will shout and receive all your life if you don't learn to do things rightly. Good character. The Bible says to him, good and faithful servant. The faithfulness there is that he has character, he has integrity. If he tells you I will deliver this job in two days' time, he won't pass two days. If he has a need to pass two days, he will put a call through to tell you. So if you intentionally not say anything, when the person comes after one week, a job of two days, you promised, you are not angry. With the job still be this. Why are not going to shout? Now, why would you tell me, Christians, believers, because we are not trained? Maintain your integrity, guard it as a sacred thing. Guard your character as a sacred thing. You are into fashion designing or tailoring. You collected somebody's work and tell the person, today Sunday, you say, come on Tuesday, I'll give you a job. Then because you saw somebody to pay you, you left the job. When the person called you on Tuesday, say, come show. Your work is ready. Then you intentionally position somebody's clothes here. Say, check that place. When you check out, you say, hey, no be your clothes that is so liar. Don't you intentionally kept are we together? Challenge yourself. Then manners. No matter how much we play and joke together. I say, Baboski, how you doing? I will fire you block. Both are waiting and fast forward block. Why? Don't abuse access. Don't abuse it. Because these are the things I check. You know the good thing about it is that when I give you an access, I didn't just give you as a gift, I give you as a trust. 
because I'm asking you to come and see certain aspects of my life the world cannot see. Have you not heard when they were looking for Elisha, what did they say? When they were looking for a man of God, and they said there is one prophet, Elisha, who washed the hands of Elijah. He washed what? The hands. He saw the smell. Once, did you ever hear he was impacted by Elijah? You can't stand an impacted man not be impacted. It comes to you. He washed the hands. He saw how dirty that hands is. And then in the same meeting, you will see that man stretching the hands before a river. A sea. And the sea will be parting. Look at David. Was given access to King Saul Palace. And he never abused it. He was the one playing the guitar. For demons to get out of Saul. And he never once mentioned it as a mistake in scripture. Some of you, you will have write poem. I was the one. When I play my keyboard, you will compose song just to so people know you are access to greatness. Do you know one time even Saul insulted him when he came and told his brother that I want to defeat Goliath and Saul said, Let me see who the young man talking. When they brought David to Saul, Saul did not even know who David was. He said, Ah, who Saul are you? I should try that to you. Saul, respect yourself. You know where you are. You will remind him. Respect yourself. Let's make things easy for both of us. Have a good character. Number four, build a great name. Build a great name. Strive for visibility and influence. Matthew 5.14. Where I say no one lighted a candle and put it under what? A bush. He lighted it for all to see. You can't be selling something nobody knows. You can't be having a skill nobody's aware. You the great name. You can't be right for marriage and you are indoors in retreat all the time as a lady. Seeking the face of God. You will marry to Jesus and Satan will leave you alone. I promise you, you will marry to Jesus and Satan will leave you alone. You have to behave like roots. Who that now me taught to position. You know that this brother wants to say something, but his author is fighting him. And you choose to help him. Then you will like, you do what? Position. Once in a while, go as you say, ah, who is this girl talking to? You have helped him to say it, but you verbally, you, you propel the action. Are we together? Number five, hard work. Proverbs 6 and verse 10, Proverbs 24, 33, and Proverbs 28, 19. Hard work. Hard work is putting in the work to forget the hard of life. Hard work is putting in the work to forget the hard of life. Listen, they say it is smart work, not hard work. You cannot have a smart work without hard work. That's how they push some of you now. Say, take, 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 now you can't sleep. Because nobody told you the road will be easy. Now you have just found out that's how it is. You can't sleep. You are bored. Because you felt you just hold the laptop and just breathe on it. The three million winter come on. Is that not they told you about tech? That's what they told us. Even when they wanted to push us to business five years ago or six years, when entrepreneurship was starting everywhere. Everybody has a business in a prayer, have a business. They didn't tell us that song can shut down. That you can stay so by one month, you get customer. It won't be easy. You must you must put in the work. You can't take the place of hard work out of life. Do we understand that? Poverty. Listen, the Bible says in that Proverbs 6 and verse 10, 24, and verse 33, it said that a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of your hands to sleep, so shall your poverty come. You say your own. So it means that that kind of behavior summons poverty. Listen, but poverty does not just come by family altars alone. It can also come by a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of your hands to sleep, a little idleness when you refuse your hand to walk. You've listened to this sermon. Take the step, go through the pain. Life is not cheap. Everything good will cost you. Everything great will cost you. Everything successful will cost you, including the anointing. It's not funny. 
Sometimes I stay without food. Sometimes I stay praying. Straight hours. That's the price you must pay for greatness. Greatness is not cheap. But what separates the extraordinary from the ordinary is the extra everyone chooses to put in life. Listen, listen. If you truly will be successful in life, be willing to work as twice as harder than every other person in the world. Rise up to your feet. I follow the story of great men like Michael Jordan, the great basketballer. I follow the great story of great men like LeBron and the rest of them. I follow the story of Hussein Bolt when they tell you the hours they put into rigorous training to become an expert and perfect in their field. You know that success is not cheap. Success will cost you. Greatness is not cheap. Refuse idleness. Sometimes you go through your mental exercise. What's mental exercise? Study! Study. Throughout my trip yesterday, an earpiece was on my phone listening to leadership conferences. Trying to get blessed and also informed. It's a fed man to feed others. You can't give people food you have no idea. Confidence to which you see I can stand to bring forth God's word to you is that I've heard from also those ahead of me. Not just reading alone from the lives of, from the lives of those in scripture, but even those on the earth that this is the pathway. Challenge yourself. Work hard. Stop this laziness, young people. Stop it. Stop it. You will put in the work to avoid. You can't dodge it. You can't. You want first class and you say your own crazy that you just read twice and you have understood you won't see it stop deceiving yourself with certain cliches and motivation is not hard work it's smart work it's not by how far do you expect someone who puts parties into the play the piano 10 hours till it will be the same as someone who plays for 30 minutes daily or 30 minutes in one month expertise is not cheap that's why they are paid more because they put in the work into it to become it. Expertise is not cheap. How will they give you a job to do? You take two months. What's wrong with you? At your age, you already shut, you don't have time, and you are not yet great. Do you know the schedule of certain men? And one work you do, you say you you are you are your schedule one week. And when we teach this productivity in church, many of you dodge from them. You don't know we are putting in you a skill that will make you survive in the future. Are we together? I call this freelance job. You is time. Time. Everybody that wants to hire a job, they want to your speediness of delivery. And you are here as a young man, you are using that, taking months and decades to do one job. What do you want to go for? Put speed and tempo in whatever you do. Don't stretch your leg and feel you have all the time. Put speed. I need to deliver this. Time yourself and put your hand to work. It disciplines the way to which you give room for distractions and excuses. Lift up your hands and say, Lord, help me. Help me.